Direct Mode We'll now have a quick look at Direct Mode. This forms the center of the Amos Basic package and allows you to experiment with your routines and immediately observe the effects. It's important to recognize that all the screens, sprites, and music defined in your program are completely separate from the editor window. So no matter what you do in Direct Mode, you'll be able to return to your listing with just a single key press. Enter Direct Mode by pressing Escape. The editor window will slide away and you'll be presented with the main program display. Towards the bottom of this area will be a small screen which can be used to enter your direct mode commands. Try typing the following line, pressing return to execute. Print your name. Insert your name between the quotes to print your name on the Amiga's screen. Now press the up and down arrows from the keyboard to move the window around the display area. As you can see, the direct mode window is totally independent of the main program screen. Animation. So much for direct mode. Let's experiment with some of the Amos Basic Sprite. Instructions. Before we can use these commands, we'll need to load a set of sprite images. Into memory. Stay in direct mode and enter the indented lines in bold as you come to them. Listing the sprite files. We'll begin by listing all the available sprite files to the Amiga's screen. Ensure that the Amos data disk is still in the internal drive. Display the disk file directory with the line. DIR Amos underscore data spiles slash. This will display the sprite files we've supplied on the Amos data disk. These files contain all the images which are used in the various example programs. You can create your own images using the sprite definer accessory on the Amos program disk. The sprite definer incorporates a host of powerful drawing features which make it extremely easy to generate professional quality animation sequences in your games. Loading a sprite file. We can now load these sprites using the load command. The sprites will load into a special memory bank so don't expect to see any sprites to appear yet. Let's enter the sprites used by the number leap game with the following command. Load Amos data sprials slash fro 9 underscore sprials dot abk. If you make a mistake, hit F1 to get your previous line. This line can then be edited using the normal cursor keys and may be re-executed by pressing return. Now let's also load up a music file using a similar load command. Load Amos underscore data music slash funky dot abk. In order to check whether the sprites and music have been successfully loaded into memory, we'll call up the LLSTBANK instruction like so. LISL bank. This prints a line like 1, sprites. 3, music. S$0682 BOL$0000040. S$0043878 L$0081 FE. Don't worry if the numbers do not correspond as they will change depending on the Available memory. The number of sprites we've just loaded can be returned directly with the length function. 7. Print length, L. M. All the way through this manual, we will have lines you can type in. These lines will be highlighted in bold. Any text from the computer will be displayed below the program lines. In plain text, setting the sprite colors. Each set of sprite images has its own set of color. Print length, L. M. All the way through this manual we will have lines you can type in, these lines will be highlighted in bold. Any text from the computer will be displayed below the program lines. In plain text, setting the sprite colors. Each set of sprite images has its own set of color values stored on the disk. Since these can be well different from your current screen colors, it's useful to be able to grab the colors from the sprite bank and copy them into an existing screen. This can be accomplished with the get sprite palette command. Enter the line. Get Sprite Palette. All the colors in the main program screen will change immediately, but the direct mode window will be completely unaffected because it's been assigned its own separate list of color values by the Amos system. Displaying a sprite. Sprites can be displayed anywhere on the screen using a simple Amos basic sprite command. Here's an example. Sprite 8, 129, 50, 62. Animating a sprite. Let's animate this object using the Amos animation language, Amal. Amal is a unique animation system which can be used to move or animate your objects at incredible speed. Note that when you are entering the following example programs, it's essential to type each line exactly as it appears in the listing, as otherwise you may get an unexpected syntax error. Sprite 8129, T50, 62. AMAI 8, Anim 0, 62, 5, 63, 5, 64, 5, Amal on. The program above animates a small duck on the screen. Whilst it's being manipulated, the sprite can be moved around using the sprite command. Example. Sprite 8, 300, 50. Moving a sprite. 
Now for some movement. Sprite A, 129, 150, 62, A dollar equals Anim 0, 62, 5, 63, 5, 64, 5. A dollar equals A dollar plus loop, move 320, 0, 100, move dash 320, 0, 100, jump loop. Amal 8 A dollar, Amal on. This program animates the duck and moves it back and forth across the screen, using just three lines L. Although the instructions between the quotes may look like basic, they're actually written in Amal. All Amal programs are executed 50 times a second and they can be exploited to produce silky smooth animation effects independently of your basic programs. Just to prove how amazing Amal really is, hit ESC to jump back to the basic editor. After a few moments, return to direct mode. Your sprite will still be bouncing across the screen. As if nothing had happened. Music Maestro. For a finale, let's play the music. Ensure you're still in direct mode, turn up the volume on your monitor and start the music running with the music command like so. Music 1. By the way, you can stop the music with the command. Music off. The journey continues. Hopefully, you'll now have a pretty good idea of what Amos Basic can achieve. But so far, we've only looked at a tiny fraction of Amos Basic's power. As you experiment with the Amos package, you'll quickly discover a whole new world, full of exciting possibilities. Amos Basic can't, of course, transform you into an expert games programmer. Overnight. Like any programming language, it does take a little time to familiarize yourself with the entire repertoire of commands. We'll therefore end this section with a few guidelines to help you on your way. Hints and tips. The best way to learn about Amos is to create small programs to animate sprites, scroll screens or generate high score tables. Once you've gained a little confidence, you'll then be able to incorporate these routines into an actual game. Don't be overawed by the sheer size of the Amos basic language. In practice, you can achieve terrific effects with only a tiny fraction of the 500 or so commands available from Amos. Start by mastering just a couple of instructions such as Sprite and Bob, and then work slowly through the various sections. As you progress, you'll gradually build up a detailed knowledge of the Amos system. Although we've attempted to make this package as easy to use as possible, a thorough Grounding of the general principles of basic programming is invaluable. If you're new to basic, you may find it helpful to purchase an introductory text such as Alcox. Illustrating basic. Cambridge University Press. 9. Plan your games carefully on paper. It's amazing how many problems can be completely avoided at the early design stages. Never attempt to tackle really large projects without prior preparation. It's the easiest way to get permanently lost. When you're writing a game, Try to concentrate on the quality of the gameplay rather than the special effects. The graphics and music can always be added later if the ideas are good enough. Fill in the registration card and join the Amos User Club immediately. There's a regular newsletter providing an essential source of ideas, news, and tips about the Amos Basic system. You'll also have access to a growing library of public domain software, including sprites, samples, and music, all of which can be freely incorporated into your own programs. We're expecting many exciting developments on the Amos scene, such as extensions, utility programs and even books. So if you want to play a real part in the evolution of this package, join the Amos Club now. We'll be delighted to hear from you. 3. The Editor. The Amos Editor provides you with a massive range of editing facilities. Not only is it exceptionally powerful, but it's also delightfully easy to use. All commands can be executed, either directly from the screen or via an impressive range of simple keyboard alternatives. It's so friendly in fact, that if you've a little experience with computers, you'll probably be able to use it straight out of the box. One of the most exciting features of this system, is that the listing is displayed completely separately from your main program screen. So you can instantly flick from your program display to the editor window using a single key press, escape. If you've plenty of memory, it's also possible to load several programs in Amos Basic at a time. Each program can be edited totally independently, and it's possible to effortlessly switch between the various programs in memory by pressing just two keys from the editor. The first thing you see after Amos has loaded into memory is a standard credit screen. Applause applause. Press a key to remove this window and enter the editor. The menu window. At the top of the screen, there's a menu window containing a list of the currently available commands. This forms the gateway to all Amos Basics powerful editing features. Commands can be quickly executed by moving the mouse pointer over an item, and hitting the left mouse button. 
Each command is also assigned to a particular function key. In addition to the main menu, there are also a number of other menus. The most important of these menus is the system menu. This can be brought into view by either holding down the right mouse button, or pressing the shift key from the keyboard. The system menu contains a range of important system commands such as load, save, new, etc. Like the main menu, all options can be executed using either the left mouse bottom, or by pressing an appropriate function key. Here are some examples. FL F2 Shift plus FL Shift plus F3 Run the current program. Tests your program for syntax errors. Load a program, also Amiga and L. Save a program, Amiga and S. Immediately below the menu window, there's a single line containing a range of useful information. The information line L equals 1 C equals 1 text equals 40,000 chip equals 91000 fast equals O edit example. The markers at the far left display the editor mode, insert or overwrite. There's also an indication of the line and column you are presently editing. Alongside these markers is a list of three numbers. Text, measures the amount of memory which has been assigned to the editor window. This can be adjusted within AMOS Basic using a simple set buffer command from the search menu. 11. Chip holds the amount of memory which can be accessed directly by the Amiga's custom chips. Don't panic if you've an unexpanded A500, and are feeling a little memory hungry. There are several ways to dramatically increase this value in your basic programs, see the section on conserving memory for more details. Fast, lists the amount of fast memory which has been installed in your computer. Whenever possible, Amos will use this memory in preference to the more valuable chip. Memory. Edit, displays the name of the program you are currently editing. Initially this area will be totally blank, but when you load or save a program to the disk, the new file name will be automatically entered into the information line. The editor window. The editor window forms the heart of the Amos system, and allows you to type in your basic program listings directly from the keyboard. All text is inserted at the current cursor position, which is indicated by a flashing horizontal line. At the start of your session, the cursor will always be placed at the top left-hand corner of the editing window. It can be moved around the current line using the left and right cursor. Keys. Your line can be edited on a character-by-character -character basis using the delete and backspace keys. Delete erases the character immediately underneath the cursor, whereas backspace deletes the character to the left of this cursor. As an example, type the line. Print Amos. When you press return, your new line will be entered into Amos Basic. Anything Amos recognizes as a command will be immediately converted into a special format. All basic commands begin with a capital letter and continue in lower case. So the previous line will be displayed as print Amos. Similarly, all Amos variables and procedures are displayed in capitals. This lets you quickly check whether you've made a mistake in one of your program lines. Supposing for instance, you'd entered a line like input what's your name, name dollar. This would be displayed as input what's your name, name dollar. Since input is in uppercase, it's immediately obvious that you've made an error of some sort. Okay, now for a little fun. Move the cursor under the print command you entered a few moments ago and type in the following lines of basic instructions. Center do. X dollar equals onky dollar, if X dollar then print X dollar. Loop. Don't forget to press the return key after each and every line. Now move the cursor through your new program using the arrow keys. Finally, press the F1 key to run this program. The editor window will disappear and a separate program display will flip into place. The program now expects you to type in some text from the keyboard. As you can see, the program screen has its own independent cursor line. This is totally separate to the one used by the editor. So you can play about as much as you like, without changing your current editing position. After you've finished, press CNTRL and C to abort the program. A thin line will now be displayed over the screen. This can move using the up and down cursor arrows. Program interrupted at line 4. Loop. Pressing the space bar at this point would return you back to the editor. But since we've already seen the editor, let's have a brief look at the direct mode instead. Hit the escape key to flip this mode into place. An introduction to direct mode. Direct mode provides you with an easy way of testing your basic programs. For the time being, we'll examine just a couple of its more interesting features. All direct mode commands are entered into a special screen which is completely independent from the program display. You can move this screen up and down using the arrow keys from the keyboard. 
at the top of the window, there's a list of 20 function key assignments. These represent a list of commands which have been previously assigned to the various function keys. They can be accessed by hitting the left or right Amiga keys in combination with one of the various function keys. Whilst you're in direct mode, you can execute any basic instructions you like. The only exceptions are things like loops or procedures. As with the editor, all commands should be entered into the computer by pressing the return key. Here are some examples. Print 42. Answer equals 6. Print answer asterisk 9. Curse off. Close workbench. Run. Print a constant. Perform a calculation. Turn off text cursor. Deactivate workbench. Saves around 40k but aborts. Multitasking operations. Run your program again. It's important to recognize that no matter what you do in direct mode, there will be absolutely no effect on the current program listing. So you can mess about to your heart's content, with no risk of deleting something in your basic program. It's now time to return to the editor window. So wave a fond farewell to direct mode. And enter the editor by pressing escape. 13. See how the cursor flashes in exactly the same position as before. This demonstrates that the two modes are completely separate. You can test this by diving back to direct mode. By hitting the escape key once again. After you've played around with direct mode to your satisfaction, enter the editor window. Everything will be restored to exactly the state you left it. Loading a program. We'll now discuss the various procedures for loading and saving your programs on the disk. As usual, these options can be executed either from the menu window or using a range of simple two key commands from the editor. The fastest way to load a program is to hold down either of Amiga keys and press the letter L. You'll now be presented with the standard Amos file selector window. Nowadays, file selectors have become a familiar part of most packages available on the Amiga. So if you've used one before, the Amos system will hold no real surprises. However, since the file selector is such an integral part of Amos Basic, it's well worth explaining it in some detail. The Amos file selector. Selecting a file from the disk couldn't be easier. Simply move the mouse cursor over the required file name so that it's highlighted in reverse text. To load this file into memory, click twice on the left mouse button. Alternatively, you can enter the name straight from the keyboard and just press return. If you make a mistake, and wish to leave the selector without loading a file, move the mouse over the quit button and select it with the left button. Amos will abort your operation. And display a not done message on the information line. As an example, place your copy of the Amos program disk into the internal drive. And press Amiga and L to load a file. If you've been following our tutorial, Amos will give you the option of saving the existing program first. Unless you've made any interesting changes, Press N to enter the file selector. Otherwise, see saving a program for further instructions. When the file selector appears, look out for a file with the name hithera.amos. Once you've found it, position the mouse over the name, and click twice on the left button. The example file will now load into memory, and the following listing will be loaded into Amos Basic. Rem hi there Amos users. Sys 0, Rem clear the screen with color 0. 2. Rem get some random numbers. X equals RND, 320Y equals RND, 200I equals RND, 15P equals RND, 15. Ink IP, rem add a little color. Text XY, hi there. Rem graphic text. Lube. Move the text cursor over the text hi there and insert your own message. Now press F1. To run the program. The program display will rapidly fill up with dozens of copies of your text. Press CNTRL and C to exit from this routine. Saving a basic program. Return to the editor window, and type Alt plus S to save your current program onto the disk. If you feel like a change, hold down the right mouse key and click on the Save As option from the system menu with the left button. Either way you'll jump straight back to the Amos file selector window. You should now enter the name of your new file straight from the keyboard. As you type, your letters will appear in a small window at the bottom of the selector. Like the editor. There's a cursor at the current typing position. This cursor can be moved around using all the normal editing keys. Finally, press return to save your program to disk. We said it was easy. Scrolling through your files. If your disk is reasonably full, the standard selection window won't be able to list the entire contents of your disk at once. You can page through the listing using the scroll bar to the left of the selection window. Place the mouse over the bar 
and hold down the left button. Uli now be able to drag the bar up or down with the mouse, moving the file window as you go. A similar effect can also be achieved by clicking on the arrow icons. Changing the current drive to the right of the file window, there's a list of drive names. The precise contents of the window will naturally depend on the devices you've connected to your Amiga. If you have several drives, you can switch between them by simply clicking on the appropriate name. The directory of this drive will now be entered into the selection window. And the files can be chosen in the normal way. Changing the directory. When you search through the directly listing, you will discover several names with an asterisk. Character, asterisk, in front of them. These are not files at all. They are entire directories in their own right. You can enter one of these folders by selecting them with the left mouse button. You may then choose your files directly from this folder. Note that only the files with the current extension.amus will be displayed. Once you've opened a directory, you can set it as the default using the set dir button. The next time you enter the file selector or obtain a directory listing with DIR, your chosen folder will be entered automatically. Similarly, you can move back to the previous directory by clicking on the parent button. See parent for more details. Setting the search path. Normally, Amos will search for all file names with the extension .amos. If you want to load a file with another extension such as .bock, you can edit the search pattern directly. This can be accomplished in the following way. Move the text cursor to the path window by pressing with the up arrow from the keyboard. Now type your new path and hit return. A full description of the required syntax can be found in the section on the DIR command. Warning. Amos uses its own individual search patterns which are very different from 15. The standard Amiga DOS system. If you're unsure, delete the entire line up to the current volume or drive name and hit return. This will present you with a full list of all the files. On the present disk, using the file selector. Interestingly enough, it's also possible to call this file selector directly from your own programs. For a demonstration, enter direct mode, with ESC, and type the following line. Print fsl dollar, star. After you've chosen a file, the name you've selected will be printed straight onto the screen. CFSEL dollar for a detailed explanation of this command. Editor tutorial. We'll now have a brief look at some of the more advanced editing features available from the Amos editor. We'll start by loading an example program from the disk. Just for a challenge, we've placed this in a separate manual folder on the Amos program disk. Insert your copy of the program disk into your Amiga's internal drive and call up the file selector window with Amiga and L. Now open the manual folder by selecting it with the left button. A new list of folders will be displayed in the file selection window. As you can see, there's one folder for each chapter in this manual. To list the files available for the current chapter, open the chapter underscore 3 folder. Simply place the cursor over this name, and click on the left button. You'll now be presented with all the examples files for this chapter. Finally, load example 3.1.amus into memory by selecting it with the mouse. After a few moments the program will load into Amos Basic. In case you're wondering, it's a small program to display a working dialog box on the screen. Hit F1 for a quick demonstration. When you click on one of the buttons, the program simply displays its number and exits. Back to basic. If you examine this program, you should discover a couple of important facts. Firstly, there's not a line number in sight. Due to the power of Amos Basic, line numbers aren't really needed. So we've made them completely optional in your basic programs. It's entirely up to you whether you wish to use them. Another interesting feature is that there seems to be a lot of lines starting with a strange procedure statement. These form the starting points for all the procedure definitions in this program. Procedures are independent program sections with their own lists of variables and data statements. They are rather similar to the GOSUBs you'd find in standard BASIC. However, they are much more powerful. We'll be discussing them in detail in Chapter 4. You can examine this program in several different ways. Scrolling through a listing. Alongside the main editor window are two scroll bars. These allow you to page through your listing with the mouse. Move the mouse pointer over the vertical bar and hold down the left button. Now drag the bar down the screen. The editor window will scroll smoothly downwards through the listing. You can also scroll the program using the arrow icons at the top and bottom of this bar. Clicking on these icons moves the line exactly one place in the required direction. At the far bottom of the editor window, there's a horizontal scroll bar. This can be used to move the window left and right in exactly the same way. 
if you prefer to use the keyboard for your editing, you will be pleased to discover that there are dozens of equivalent keyboard options as well. Try the following. Up arrow, from keyboard. Down. CNTRL and up arrow. CNTRL and down arrow. Moves window up by a single line. Scrolls window down by a line. Shift the listing to the previous page. Moves the listing to the next page. All the keyboard options obey the same basic principles. So once you've familiarized yourself with one command, the rest are easy. A full list of these commands can be found towards the end of this chapter. Now we've looked at the program, it's time to actually change something. Search through the program listing until you find the line. Alert 50, alert box, OK, cancel L2. This calls a basic procedure which displays a working alert box on the screen. The format of this procedure is Alert Y Cord, TITLE $1, Title $2 Boolean $1 Boolean Dollar Paper, Inc. Let's change this alert to something a little more exciting. Move the cursor over the above statement and edit the line with the cursor keys so that it looks like so. Alert 50, X Lerminale, Slafin, Yap, Nope, 13. Execute the program by pressing F1 or selecting Run from the main menu. You will be given the unique option of stopping the manual author in his tracks. Select a button with the mouse and make you choice. Ouch. That hurt. In practice, you can change the title and the buttons to literally anything you like. Feel free to use this routine in your own programs. Hopefully, the above example will have provided you with a real spur to use procedures in your own programs. In order to aid you in this task, we've built a powerful range of special editing features into the Amos editor. Label slash procedure searches. If your program is very long, it can be quite hard to find the starting points of your various procedure definitions. We've therefore included the ability to jump straight to the next procedure definition in your program, using just two keys, Alt plus arrow. For an example of this feature, place the cursor at the start of the listing and press Alt plus down arrow. Your cursor will be immediately moved to the beginning of the first procedure definition in the current program, alert. You can repeat this process to jump to each procedure definition in turn. Once you've reached the end of the listing, you can jump upwards through the listing with Alt plus up arrow in an identical way. 17. This system is not just limited to procedures of course. It also works equally well with labels or line numbers. So even if you don't need procedures, you'll still find a use for this feature. Folding a procedure definition. If you build up your programs out of a list of frequently used procedures, your listings can easily be cluttered with the definitions of all your various library routines. Fortunately, help is at hand. With a simple call to the fold command, you can hide away any of your procedure definitions from your listings. These routines can be used in your program as normal, but their definitions will be replaced by a single procedure. Statement Example Position the cursor anywhere in the definition of alert and click on the fold slash unfold option from the menu window. Bing the contents of your procedure will vanish into thin air. Despite this, you can run the program with no ill effects. The only change has been in the appearance of the listing in the editor window. If you want to modify this procedure, it's easy enough to get back to the original listing. Just select fold slash unfold again, and your procedure will be expanded to its full glory. It's also possible to fold all the procedure in your program at once. This uses an option on the search menu called close all. To bring the search menu onto the screen, click on the button with the same name, or press F5 from the keyboard. Now select the Close All button to remove the procedure definitions from the current program. The effect on example 3.1 is dramatic. The entire program now fits into just a single screen. So you can instantly see the procedures we've been using in the program. Each procedure definition can be edited individually by expanding it with the Fold slash Unfold button or you can unfold the whole program with open all from the search menu. Search slash replace. The search slash replace commands provided by the Amos Basic Editor are accessed through a special search menu which can be called up either from the menu window or by pressing function key F4. Finding an item. We will continue our tutorial with a brief look at of some of the search slash replace instructions. Let's start with the find command. This can be executed either directly from the search menu or using the keys CNTRL and F from the keyboard. When you select this command, you will be asked to enter the search string. For an example, press CNTRL and F and type rem at the prompt. Amos will now search for the next rem statement in your program, starting from the current cursor position. If the 
search is successful, the cursor will be placed over the requested item. The search can now be repeated from this point with the find next option, CNTRL and N. Replace. Supposing we wanted to change all the REM statements in a program with the equivalent characters. This could be accomplished with the replace command. In order to use this option, it's necessary to define the replacement string. So the first time you call up replace, you will always be asked to enter this string from the keyboard. Press CNTRL and R, type in, apostof, at the prompt and hit the return key to enter it into the computer. You now set the search string with the find option like so. Press CNTRL and F to select the find option. Type rem into the information line. The cursor will then be moved straight to the next rem statement in your program listing. To change this to the replacement string and jump to the next occurrence, select rep slash ace. CNTRL and R, once again. Alternatively, if the rem is in the middle of the line, you'll need to ski it, because Amos only allows you to substitute a quote for this command at the stole, 6. Line. You can avoid this problem and jump directly to the next item in your programmer, s. Find next. Cut and paste. The Amos block commands allow you to cut out parts of your programs and save them. In memory for future use. Once you've created a block, you can copy it anywhere you like. In the current listing. Here's an example of this feature in action. Let's take the previous alert program. And cut out a single procedure. Place the mouse pointer over the first line of the invert. Procedure and depress the right mouse button. We can now enter this procedure into a block using the mouse. Hold down the right mouse key, and drag the point towards the bottom of the display. As you move the mouse, the selected area will be highlighted in reverse. We can now grab this area into memory using cut. When you press CNTRL and C from the keyboard, the procedure will be removed from the listing and stored into memory. It's now possible to paste this block anywhere in your program. For the purposes of our example, move the text cursor down to the bottom off listing, and call the paste option with CNTRL and P. The invert procedure will now be copied to the current cursor position. Multiple programs and accessories. Multiple programs. Although Amos only allows you to edit a single program at a time, there's no limit to the number of programs which can be installed into memory, other than the amount of available storage space. Once you've installed a program in this way, you can execute it straight from Editor window with the run other option. On an expanded system, you'll easily be able to store two or three full-sized programs. In memory without problems. But even if you're only using a standard A500 with 512K of memory, you'll still find a real use for this function. Supposing, for instance, you encounter a problem in one of your programs. Amos will let you effortlessly swap your existing program into memory so that you can freely experiment with the various possibilities until you find a solution. After you've finished, you can now grab your new routine into memory with the cut option, and flick back into your original program by pressing just two keys. The new routine can then be pasted into position, and you can continue with your program as before. This ability to stop everything and try out your ideas immediately, is incredibly valuable in practice. Another possibility is to permanently keep all he most commonly needed utilities such 19. As the sprite definer or the map editor in memory. You can now access these utilities instantaneously, whenever you need them. In fact, Amos includes a special accessory system which makes this even easier. The utility programs can be given total access to all the memory banks in your main programs. So the sprite definer can grab the images straight from your current program and modify them directly. This technique speeds up the overall development process by an amazing degree. Let's have a quick demonstration of these facilities. Enter the following small program. Into the editor. Print this is program 1. Boom. We can now push this program into memory using the push command. This is called up. By pressing Amiga and P from keyboard. You will then be asked to enter the name of your. Program from the information line. Type a name like program 1 at this point. The edit screen will be cleared completely. The new window is totally separate from. Your original program. As a demonstration, enter a second routine like so. Print this is program 2. Shoot. This program can now be executed from the editor window using run, F1. But when you're return you can immediately jump to the old one with the flick option. Try pressing Amiga and F from the keyboard. As before you'll be asked to enter a name. For your program. Use a name like program 2 for this purpose. The editor will now jump. Straight to your original program as if by magic. It's possible to repeat this process to jump back and forth between the two programs. 
Each program is entirely independent and can have its list of own banks and dot program. Screens So far, we've only discussed how you can use two programs at a time. However, you can actually have as many program in memory as you like. These programs can be selected individually using the run other and edit other options from the menu window. When you call these commands, a special program selector will be displayed on the screen. The program selector is almost identical to the familiar Amos file selector. The only difference is that it allows you to choose a program from memory rather than from the disk. You can select a program by simply highlighting it with the mouse cursor and clicking once on the left button. Have a try at running and editing program 1 and program 2 using this system. Once you get the hang of it, it's amazingly easy to use. See the load other and new other commands. Accessories. In order to distinguish accessories from normal basic programs, they're assigned a .acc extension instead of the more usual .amos. Accessories can be loaded into memory like any normal program using the load other command. Load other presents you with a normal file selector which can be used to load an accessory program from the disk. After the accessory has been installed into memory you will be returned straight back to your current program. You can now run this accessory at any time using the run other option from the menu window. Simply move the mouse pointer over your required accessory and press the left button. Alternatively, you can load all the accessories from the current disk using the ACNUL load feature. This option can be found on the system menu which is displayed when you hold down the right mouse button. ACNUL load erases all existing accessories and loads a new set from the current disk. For a demonstration, place the AMOS program disk into your drive and click on the ACC new slash load button from the system menu. The help accessory will be quickly loaded into memory. Help is a special accessory. Because it is can be called up directly by pressing the help key on the keyboard. We've packed this program with all the information you'll need about the accessory programs. Supplied with Amos Basic. All you need to do, is just follow the prompts which will be displayed on the screen. Direct mode. The direct mode window can be entered from the editor by pressing the escape key at any time. As a default, the window is displayed in the lower half of the screen, with the program screen in the background. If you run a program that changes the screen format, displays windows, animates sprites etc., then all this screen data will remain intact. So you can move the direct window around or flip back to the editor to make program changes without destroying the current program screen. This direct mode window is totally independent and is displayed on its own front level screen. Whilst you're within direct mode you can type any line of Amos Basic you wish. The only commands you cannot use are loops and branch instructions. You only have access to normal variables, as distinct from the local variables defined in a procedure. Direct mode editor keys. Escape. Return. Delete. Backspace. Left arrow. Right arrow. Shift plus left. Shift height. Shift delete. Shift back. Help. F1 to F10. Jump to the editor window. Executes the current line of commands. Delete character under cursor slash. Delete character to the left of the cursor. Move cursor left. Cursor right. Skip a word to the left. Skip a word to the right. Deletes entire line. Ditto. Displays the function key definitions to the direct window. These keys remember the last 10 lines you've entered from direct. Mode. F1 displays the latest one entered, F2 the second to last etc. The memory area used by this system is always cleared when you return to the editor window or run one of your programs. 21. The menu window. Here's a detailed explanation of all the options which are available from the main menu. Window. Default menu. This gives you various commands that allow you to operate the editor, plus give you access to the block and search menus. Run, F1. Runs the current program from memory. Test, F2. Checks the syntax of the entire program and places the cursor at the first error. Indent, F3. Takes the current program and neatly indents the listing for you. Blocks menu, CNTRL or F4. Displays the blocks menu in the selection window. These options can now be called either. With the mouse or from the keyboard by pressing the appropriate function key. You can. Return to the main menu by simply clicking on the right mouse button, taking the pointer out of the function key area or by hitting a key. Search menu, Alt or F5. Brings up the search menu. This allows you to search through your program for specific keywords and change them if required. You can also adjust the size of the text buffer or alter the current tab from this menu. Run other, F6. 
runs a program or accessory held in the Amiga's memory. Edit Other, F7. Edits a program which has been previously installed into memory using the load other or acknowledge load commands. If you haven't saved your existing program, you will be prompted for its name. Your current program will now be pushed into memory, and you will be able to choose another program to edit using the program selector. To select this program, simply move the mouse over its name and press on the left button. Note that the size of the editor buffer is stored into memory along with your program. Along with your program. This buffer area will reset to its original size the next time you edit your program. If you attempt to edit a program which has not been saved in this way, such as an accessory, the memory buffer will be automatically increased if required. If you run out of memory the option will be aborted with an out of memory error. Overwrite, F8. Toggles between two separate editing modes. Insert mode, default, inserts a space in your existing text to contain every character you type from the keyboard. If for instance, you were editing a line like Rem testing in write mode. Since the cursor is underneath the R, typing in E would change the line to Rem testing insert mode. Overwrite mode, overwrite mode completely replaces the character under the cursor with your new key press. Taking the previous example, typing E would produce the line Rem testing inside mode. After you've changed the mode, the menu item will be set to overwrite. Selecting this Option will return you back to the normal editing system. The current typing mode is indicated by a letter at the far left of the information line. I equals insert and O equals overwrite. Note that if you make a mistake while in insert mode, you can usually reverse the alterations on the current line by pressing CNTRL and U. Fold slash unfold, F9. Takes a procedure definition and folds it away inside your program listing. Once you've folded a procedure, only the first line in your definition will be displayed in your listings. To fold a procedure, move the cursor anywhere inside the definition and select the Fold option. Your procedure will be tested for syntax errors, and will be hidden inside your Program listing. It's vital to realize that absolutely nothing has happened to the actual Program lines in the procedure. The only change has been in the way these lines are Displayed in your listings. Normally, it's possible to reopen a folded procedure by repeating the process. Place the cursor over a folded procedure and click on fold slash unfold. Hit F9 for a shortcut. If you feel the need for extra security you can also call up a special lock accessory from the Amos program disk. This will ask for a code word, and will lock your procedures so that they can't be subsequently examined from Amos basic. Simply fold your required procedures and load fold.acc using the load others command. Full instructions are included with the utility. The real beauty of this system is that it allows you to create whole libraries of your routines on the disk. These can be loaded into memory as a separate program, see load. Other. You can now cut out the routine you need and copy them directly into your main program. So once you've written a routine, you can place it into a procedure and reuse it. Again and again. If you're intending to use this system, there are several points to consider. Whenever you fold or unfold a procedure a syntax check is made of the entire program. If an error occurs the operation will not be performed. So it's vital that you keep backup. Copies of all your procedures in unfolded format. Don't try to delete a folded procedure using the normal cursor keys. This will have no. 23. Permanent effect. So define a block around your procedure and use cut instead. Cut and paste work fine with folded procedures. The complete procedure definition is. Entered into memory when you cut the procedure statement. But you should take care. To avoid the following errors. This array is not defined in your main program. When you're copying a routine from one program to another, it's easy to forget about the shared or global variables and arrays you've defined in your main program. If a procedure uses external variables, which have not been defined, you'll get the above error. So check through your original listing for shared or global statements. Label defined twice. You've attempted to make two copies of a procedure in the same program. You've probably grabbed an extra procedure by mistake. Procedure not defined. In Amos Basic, it's perfectly acceptable to call procedures inside one another. This occasionally causes problems when you attempt to unpack one of these procedures, as the operation will only be performed if all the procedures it uses have been also been copied into your program. It's a good idea to list these routines at the start of a procedure, as this can avoid a lot of confusion. Line insert, CNTRL plus 1 or F10. Inserts a line at the current cursor position. The system menu. The system menu contains a series of commands which allow you to load and save your 
Programs from the disk. To select this menu simply press either the shift key or hold down. The right mouse button. Here's a full list of the available options. Load, Shift plus F1 or Amiga and L. Loads an Amos basic file from the disk. This file is chosen using the standard Amos file. Selector. Save, Shift plus F2 or Amiga and S. Saves the current Amos program. If you're saving a file for the first time, you will be asked to enter its name with the file selector. If there's another program on the disk with the same name, it will be automatically renamed with an extension of .bock. This provides a useful insurance against mistakes, as you can usually get back to the previous version of your program if you do something silly. Save as, Shift plus F3 or Shift plus Amiga and S. Saves the current program under another name. The new name is chosen with the help of the file selector. Note that if you save a program with the name autoexec.amus it will be automatically loaded and executed on startup. When you enter Amos Basic, the main program screen will be displayed immediately. Merge, Shift plus F4. Enters the chosen program at the current cursor position without erasing your original program first. This is used to incorporate routines taken from another program, such as the Amos Map Definer. Merge ASC, Shift plus FS. Merges an ASC version of an Amos Basic program with the existing program in, Mori. AC.new slash load, Shift plus F6. Removes all current accessory routines from memory and enters a new set from the disk. All files with the extension .acc will be automatically loaded by this command. If you're using an unexpanded A500, you should treat this command with a little caution as it's all too easy to run out of memory. Load others, Shift plus F7. Loads a single accessory program from the current disk. This can be accessed using the Run Others command from the main menu. New Others, Shift plus FS. Erases one or more accessories from the Amiga's memory. When you call this command, you will be presented with a standard Amos program selector. You can now click on either a single program to erase or the All button to delete all accessories. New, Shift plus F9. Erases the program you are currently editing. If you haven't saved your program, you're given the option of saving it onto the disk before it is deleted. Quit, Shift plus F10. Exits Amos and returns control to the CLI. As with new you are given the option of saving your existing program before leaving Amos. The Blocks menu. The Blocks menu provides you with the useful ability to move whole sections of your program from one place to another. If required, these features can be accessed directly from the main menu with the mouse. But you'll probably find it faster to use the alternative keyboard commands. Here's a complete list of the various options. Block Start, CNTRL and B or CNTRL and F1. Sets the starting point for the current block. Block End, CNTRL and E or CNTRL and F6. Defines the end of a block. Normally it's used straight after a CNTRL and B command. The region between your starting and ending points will now be displayed in inverse text. 25. Block Cut, CNTRL and C or CNTRL and F2. Removes the selected block from its current position and loads it into memory. You can now copy this block anywhere in your program using the paste command. Block paste, CNTRL and P CNTRL and F7. Pastes the entire contents of a block at the current cursor position. This block must have been saved into memory using the cut or store commands. Block move, CNTRL and M or CNTRL and F3. Moves the highlighted block straight to the current cursor position, erasing the original version completely. Block store, CNTRL and S or CNTRL and FS. Copies the contents of a block into memory, without affecting the current program. This option provides you with a simple way of transferring lines from one program in memory to another. Block hide, CNTRL and H or CNTRL and F4. Deselects the block you've highlighted using the block start and block end commands. Block save, CNTRL and F9. Saves the current block on the disk as a Amos program. You can now reload it using the Merge or load commands from the system menu. Note any memory banks in your program are not saved along with your listing. Save ASC, CNTRL and FS. Stores your selected block on the disk as a normal text file. This file can be loaded directly into any standard word processor. If you've access to a modem, you can also copy these files on bulletin boards and communication networks such as MICR Olink and Prestel. Block print, CNTRL and F10. Outputs the selected block straight to the printer if it's connected. There is also a special select all command that can only be accessed via the keyboard.
pressing CNTRL and A will block select the whole of the current program. This is useful when you need to save out the entire program as an ASC file. The search menu. One of the best ways to learn about the Amos system is to examine some of the example programs we've supplied on the Amos data disk. With the help of the Amos search menu, you can search the listings for examples of any Amos instruction you like. This will give you valuable tips about how it can be used in the context of a real program. You can also use the replace command to change all the variable names in one of your basic programs. So you can use short, simple names when you're entering your programs, and convert them into something more readable when you've finished. The search menu can be called up straight from the menu window using the mouse. Alternatively, use one of the many keyboard shortcuts to call the required function directly. Find, CNTRL and F or Alt plus F1. Enters a string of up to 32 characters from the keyboard and searches through your text. Until an exact match is found. The search proceeds downwards from the current cursor. Position. Find next, CNTRL and N or Alt plus F2. Searches for the next occurrence of the string you specified using find. Find top, Alt plus F3. This is identical to find except that it starts the search from the top of your program, rather. Than the cursor position. Replace, Alt plus F4 or CNTRL and R. Activates replace mode. The effect of this command varies depending on when it is used. There are two possibilities. Before a find command. You will now be asked to enter the replacement string from the keyboard. After a find. If the search operation was successful, the text and the current cursor position will be. Swapped with the replacement string. Replace will now jump to the next occurrence of the. Search string in your program. If you don't want to replace this item, you can skip directly. To the next word with find next. Replace all, Alt plus FS. Replaces all copies of a word in your program. The procedure is as follows. Confirm the command by hitting Y from the keyboard or clicking on the Yes box in the information line. Enter the string you wish to change. Input the string which the search string is to be replaced with. The search slash replace will now proceed, starting from the top of your program. Low up, Alt plus F6. Changes the case sensitivity in your various search slash replace commands. As a default all, lowercase letters are distinguished from their equivalent capitals. So G and G would be treated as different letters in your searches. This option forces Amos to assume that the upper and lowercase versions of your text are identical. In order to reflect the new operating mode, the display will be changed to low equals up. Open all, Alt plus F7. Opens all closed procedures in your program. A check is made of the syntax of the entire program before the procedures are unfolded. If an error is detected the operation will be 27. Aborted. If you encounter difficulties with this feature, see the fold command for a detailed explanation of the possible problems and their solutions. Close all, Alt plus FS. Closes all procedure definitions in your current program. Only the first line of your procedure definitions will be displayed in your listings. This makes them much shorter and removes much of the clutter from your listings. Like the previous open command, the Folding operation will only be performed if there are no errors in your current program. Once you close your procedures you can edit them individually using the separate fold slash unfold option. Set text B. 8 and F9. Set text buffer. Changes the number of characters available to hold your listings. This can be used to increase the editor's memory to allow you to enter particularly large programs into your Amiga. This can be extremely useful if you've added more memory to your Amiga. See also close editor. Set tab, CNTRL and tab or Alt plus F10. Sets the number of characters which the cursor will be moved when the user presses the tab key. Keyboard macros. Amos Basic lets you create up to 20 keyboard macros at a time. These are accessed using a combination of the left or right Amiga key and a function key. Once you've defined a macro, it can be used anywhere in the Amos system, just as if you'd entered your commands straight from the keyboard. The same macro can be called from the editor window, from direct mode, or even from inside one of your basic programs. The current key assignments are displayed in a special area above the direct mode window. While you are in direct mode, you can call this list on the screen with the help key. Similarly, pressing the left or right Amiga keys from the editor will display these definitions in the menu window. As a default, all the macro assignments are loaded with a set of common basic keywords. These can be changed using a simple option from the configuration accessory. Config.acc. It's also possible to assign these keys directly within one of your programs. Using the powerful key dollar function. 
equals key dollar equals define a keyboard macro key dollar n equals command dollar command dollar equals key dollar n key dollar assigns the contents of command dollar to function key number and n is an identification number of your function key from 1 to 20 keys from 1 to 10 are accessed by pressing the function key in conjunction with the left amiga button similarly numbers from 11 onwards are called with a right amiga fn combination note that it's essential to press both keys simultaneously otherwise your macro will 28 be misinterpreted as two separate key presses command dollar can be any string of text you wish up to a maximum of 20 characters there are two special characters which are directly interpreted by this function all plus quote generates a return code single quote encloses a comment this is only displayed in your key lists it's totally ignored by the macro routine examples key dollar l key dollar 2 equals default all plus f2 key dollar 3 equals comment print in practice this macro system can prove incredibly useful not only can you speed up the process of entering your basic programs but you can also define a list of standard inputs for your basic programs these would be extremely effective in an adventure game as can be seen from the program example 3.2 in the manual folder if you wish to generate a key press which has no ASC equivalent such as up arrow you can optionally include a scan code in these macros this is achieved using the scan dollar function equals scan dollar return a scan code for use with key dollar x dollar equals scan dollar nm n is the scan code of a key to be used in one of your macro definitions m is an optional mask which sets the special keys such as cntrl or alt in the following format key tested notes left shift key right shift key caps lock either on or off control cntrl left alt right alt left amiga this is the commodore key on some keyboards right amiga if a bit is set to a one then the associated button is depressed in your macro examples key dollar four equals we plus scan dollar dollar four c key dollar five equals page up plus scan dollar dollar four c percent zero 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 one zero 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 twenty nine conserving memory if you're using an unexpanded a500 memory can occasionally get rather tight we've therefore provided you with two powerful instructions which allow you to maximize the memory which is available for your programs before discussing these functions it's worth noting that if you have an external 3.5 inch drive you can save around 30k by deactivating it before loading amos basic since amos only accesses the disk for a few small library files you may find that the second drive is rarely if ever used so it's sensible to take the memory and run warning never turn off the drive while the amiga is switched on this will have absolutely no effect as the memory is allocated to the drive as part of your startup sequence close workbench closes the workbench close workbench closes the workbench screen saving around 40k of memory for your programs example print chip free fast free close workbench print chip free fast free close workbench can be executed either from direct mode or inside one of your basic programs a typical program line might be if fast free equals o then close workbench this would check for a memory expansion and close the workbench if extra memory was not available close editor close editor window close editor closes the editor window while your program is running saving you more than 28k of lovely memory furthermore there's absolutely no effect on your program listings if there's not enough memory to reopen the window after your program has finished amos will simply erase your current display and revert back to the standard default screen you'll now be able to effortlessly jump back to the editor with the escape key as normal what a terrific little instruction inside accessories we'll now explore the general techniques required to write your own accessory programs these are really just a specialized form of the multiple programs we discussed a little earlier. As you would expect, they can incorporate all the standard basic instructions. Accessories are displayed directly over your current program screen and the music. Sprite, or Bob animations are automatically removed from the screen. Your accessory should therefore check the dimensions and type of this screen using the screen height, screen width, and screen color commands during its initialization phase. If the current screen isn't acceptable, you may be forced to open a new screen for the accessory window or to erase the existing screens altogether with a default instruction any memory banks used by your accessory are totally independent of the main program 
If it's necessary to change the banks from the current program, you can call a special grab command. BG Rab grabs the banks used by the current program. Grab B. BGAB borrows a bank from the current program and copies it into the same bank in your accessory. If this accessory bank already exists, it will be totally erased. When the accessory returns to the editor, the bank you have grabbed will be automatically returned to your main program along with any changes. B is the number of a bank from 1 to 16. Note that this instruction can only be used inside an accessory. If you try to include it in a normal program, you'll get an appropriate error message. Prun, run a program from memory. Prun name. Executes a basic program which has been previously installed in the Amiga's memory. This command can be used either from direct mode, or within a program. In effect, prun is very similar to a standard procedure call, except that any bobs, sprites or music will be totally suspended. Note that it's impossible to call the same program twice in the same session. After you've called it once, any further attempts will be ignored completely. When the program returns to your accessory you will need to restore your screen to its original state. This will avoid the danger of your accessory screens being corrupted by the new routine. See example 3.3 in the manual folder. Equals PRG first dollar, read the first program loaded into memory. P dollar equals PRG first dollar. This returns the name of the first basic program installed in the Amiga's memory. It's used in conjunction with the PRG next dollar command to create a full list of all the currently available programs. Equals PRG next dollar, returns the next program installed in memory. P dollar equals PRG next dollar. PRG next dollar is used after a PRG first dollar command to page through all the programs installed in the Amiga's memory. When the end of the list is reached, a value of will be 31 returned by this function. Here's an example. N dollar equals PRG first dollar. While N dollar print program, N dollar N dollar equals PRG next dollar. When equals PSEL dollar, call program selector. N dollar equals PSEL dollar, filter default dollar title one dollar title two dollar. Cells dollar calls up a program selector which is identical to the one used by the run other. Edit other, load others, and new others commands. This can be used to select a program. In the usual way. The name of this program will be returned in N$. If the user has aborted from the selector, N$ will be set to an empty string. Filter sets the type of programs which will be listed by this instruction. Typical values are .acc list all the accessories in memory. .amos only displays the amos programs which have been installed. List all programs currently in memory. For further details of the system see the dir command. Default dollar. Title one dollar, title dollar holds the name of a program which will be used as a default. Contains up to two lines of text which will be displayed at the top of the selector. See example 3.4 in the manual folder for a demonstration of this instruction. The help accessory. Whenever the help key is pressed from the editor window, Amos automatically executes an accessory with the name help.acc if it's available. Unlike normal accessories, this is displayed directly over the editor window. Special access is provided to the current word. You are editing. The address of this word is placed in an address register and can be read using the AREG function. The editor control keys. Finally, here's a full list of the various control keys and their effects. Special keys. Escape. Editing keys. Backspace. Delete. Return. Shift plus back or CNTRL and Y. CNTRL and U. CNTRL and Q. CNTRL plus 1. Takes you to direct mode. Deletes the character to the immediate left of the cursor. Deletes the character directly underneath the cursor. Token I sees the current line. If you move onto a line and press. Return it will split the line, this only takes effect if you. Haven't changed anything. Deletes current line and then pulls the rest of the text up from. Below. Undo. Return the last line when in overwrite mode. Erase the rest of the characters in the line starting from the. Present cursor position. Insert a line at the current position. The cursor arrows. Left. Right. Up. Down. Shift plus left. Shift height. Shift plus up. Shift plus down. CNTRL and up. CNTRL and down. Shift plus CNTRL and up. Shift plus CNTRL and down. Amiga and up. Amiga and down. Amiga and left. Amiga height. Cursor one space to the left. Cursor one space to the right. Moves the cursor up by one line. 
There's no effect if you are at the top line of your program. Move the cursor down by a line. Place the cursor over the previous word. Position the cursor over the next word. Move the cursor to the top line of the present page. Transport the cursor to the bottom line of the current page. Display the previous page of text. Display the next page of your program. Move to start of text. Jump to end of text. Scrolls text up without moving the cursor. Scrolls text down under the cursor. Scroll program to the left. The cursor stays fixed on the current line. Moves text to the right. Program control. Amiga and S. Amiga and Shift plus S. Amiga and L. Amiga and P. Amiga and F. Amiga and T. Saves your program under a new name. Saves program under current name. Loads a program. Pushes the current program into memory and creates a new program. Flips between two programs stored in memory. Displays next program in memory. Repeating this option will allow you to display all the programs currently in memory. 33. Cut and paste. CNTRL and B. CNTRL and E. CNTRL and C. CNTRL and M. CNTRL and S. CNTRL and P. CNTRL and H. Marks. CNTRL and Shift plus N. CNTRL and N. Search slash replace. Set the beginning of a block. Set end point of a block. Cut block. Loads block into memory and erases it from its current position. This combination also works in direct mode, where it halts to the current program. Block move. Saves the block in memory without erasing it first. Paste block at current cursor position. Hide block. The highlighting will be removed from the chosen block. Defines a marker at the present cursor position. N must be a digit from the numeric keypad in the range 0 to 9. Go to mark. Jumps to a previously set mark. N must be from the numeric keypad. Alt plus up searches backwards through your program to the next line, which contains label or procedure definition. If Amos has reached the end of your procedures, the cursor will remain at its current position. Alt plus down searches down through your program to find the next label or procedure definition. CNTRL and F find asks you to enter some text to be searched for in your program. Then jumps to the first copy it can find, starting from the current cursor position. CNTRL and N find next. Use this after a find to jump to the next occurrence of your string. CNTRL and R replace. If you use this prior to find, you will be prompted. Tabs. Tab. Shift plus tab. CNTRL and tab. For a replacement string. After you've started a search with. Find however, CNTRL and R will replace your word with a new. Text, and jump to the next occurrence of the search string. Move the entire line at the current cursor to the next tab. Stop. Move the line to the previous tab. Sets the tab value. 4. Basic principles. This chapter discusses the ground rules used to construct Amos basic programs and shows you how to improve your programming style with the help of Amos basic procedures. Variables. Variables are the names used to refer to storage locations inside a computer. These locations hold the results of the calculations performed in one of your programs. The choice of variable names is entirely up to you, and can include any string of letters or numbers. There are only a couple of restrictions. All variable names must begin with a letter and cannot commence with an existing Amos basic instruction. However it is perfectly permissible to use these keywords inside a name. So variables such as vprint or score are fine. Variable names must be continuous, and may not contain embedded spaces. If a space is required, it's possible to substitute a underscore character, shift minus, instead. The following are examples of legal names. A while dollar, high underscore score, test underscore flag, height number. The maximum length of these variable names is 255 characters, for example. Here are some examples of illegal names. The illegal bits are underlined to make things clearer. While dollar, C, modern number, toad. Types of variables. Amos Basic allows you to use three different types of variables in your programs. Integers. Unlike most other basics, Amos initially assumes that all variables are integers. Integers. Are whole numbers such as 1, 3, or 8, and are ideal for holding the values used in your games. Since integer arithmetic is much faster than the normal floating point operations, using integers in your programs can lead to dramatic improvements in speed. Each 
Integer is stored in 4 bytes and can range from minus 147,483,648 to plus 147,483,648. Examples of integer variables. A. Number, score, lives. 35. Real numbers. In Amos Basic these variables are always followed by a hash, number, character. Real. Numbers can hold fractional values such as 3.1 or 1.5. They correspond directly to the standard variables used in most other versions of BASIC. Each real variable is stored in 4 bytes and can range between 1E14 and 1E15. All values are accurate to a precision of 7 decimal digits. Examples Pi, number number, test number. String variables String variables contain text rather than numbers. They are distinguished from normal variables by the dollar character at the end. The length of your text can be anything from 0 to 65,500 characters. Examples of string variables. Name dollar, path dollar, Allen dollar. Giving a variable a value. Assigning a value to a variable is easy. Simply choose an appropriate name and assign it to a value using the equals statement. Var equals 10. This loads the variable var with a value of 10. Depending on the type of your variable, it can contain either a number or a list of characters. To assign a string to a variable, you Enclose it with a pair of double quotes like so. A dollar equals hello. Notice the dollar sign after the name. This tells Amos that the variable will contain characters. Rather than a number. Arrays. Any list of variables can be combined together in the form of an array. Arrays are created. Using the dim instruction. Dim, dimension an array. Dim var, xyz. Dim defines a table of variables in your Amos basic program. These tables may have. As many dimensions as you want but each dimension is limited to a maximum of 65,000 elements. Example. Dim A$, 10, B, 10, 10, C sharp, 10, 10, 10. In order to access an element in the array you simply type the array name followed by the index numbers. These numbers are separated by commas and are enclosed between round brackets. So note that the element numbers of these arrays always start from zero. Example. Dim array, 10. Array, 0, equals 10 array. 1, equals 15. Print array, 1, array, 0. 1510. Constants. Constants are simply numbers or strings which are assigned to a variable or used in one of your calculations. They are called constants because they don't change during the course of your program. The following values are all constants. 1, 42, 3.141, hello. As a default, all numeric constants are treated as integers. Any floating point assignments to an integer variable are automatically converted to a whole number before use. Examples A equals 3.141 print A. 3. Print 19 halves. 9. Constants can also be input using binary or hexadecimal notation. Binary numbers are signified by preceding them with a percent character, and hexadecimal numbers are denoted by a dollar sign. Here's an example of the various different ways the number 255 could be expressed decimal hexadecimal binary 255 dollar ff percent 1111111111 note that any numbers you type into amos basic are automatically converted into a special internal format when you list your program these numbers are expanded back into their original form since amos basic prints all numbers in a standard way this will often lead to minor discrepancies between the number you entered and the number which is displayed in your listing. However the value of the number will remain exactly the same. Floating point constants are distinguished from integers by a decimal point. If this point is not used, the number will always be assumed to be an integer, even if this number occurs inside a floating point expression. Take the following example. 4x equals 1 to 10,000. A number equals A number plus 2. Next x. Every time the expression in this program is evaluated, the 2 will be laboriously. 37 converted into a real number. So this routine will be inherently slower than the equivalent. Program below. 4x equals 1 to 10,000. A number equals A number plus 2.0. Next x. This program executes over 25% faster than the original one because the constant is now stored directly in floating point format. You should therefore always remember to place a decimal point after a floating point constant even if it is a whole number. Incidentally, if you mix floating point numbers and integers, the result will always be returned as a real number. Example. 
Print 19.02. 9.5. Print 3.141 plus 10. 13.141. Arithmetic operations. The following arithmetic operations can be used in a numeric expression. A power. Slash and asterisk. Mod. Divide and multiply. Plus an a and d. Or. Xor. Modulo operator. Remainder of a division. Plus and minus. Logical in. Logical or. Logical XOR. We've listed these operations in descending order of their priority. This priority refers to the sequence in which the various sections of an arithmetic expression are evaluated. Operations with the highest priority are always calculated first. Here is an example of how this works in practice. Print 10 plus 2 asterisk 5 dash 8 4 plus 5 2. This evaluates in the following order. 5 a 2 equal to 5 5 equals 25. 2 asterisk 5 equals 10. 8 fourths equals 2. 10 plus 10 equals 20. 20 to 2 equals 18. 18 plus 25 equals 43. If you wanted this to evaluate differently, you would simply enclose the parts of the expression you wish to execute first in round brackets. Print, 10 plus 2, asterisk, 5 dash 8 slash 4 plus 5, 2. This gives the result 12, 8 a 2, or 12 64 or 7 6 8. As you can see, the addition of just two pairs of brackets has changed the sense of the expression completely. While on the subject of arithmetic, it's worth mentioning three simple instructions, which can speed up your programs considerably. Inc, add one to an integer variable. Inc var. Inc adds one to an integer variable using a single 68,000 instruction. It is logically equivalent to the expression var equals vart1, but is much faster. Example. A equals 10 ln c a print a. 11. Dis. Subtract 1 from an integer variable. Disvar. This instruction sub1 racts 1 from the integer variable var. Example. A equals 2. Dis a. Print a. 1. Add, fast integer addition. Add vexp, base to top. The standard form of this instruction immediately adds the result of the expression exp to the integer variable v. It's equivalent to the line, v equals vt exp. The only significant difference between the two statements is that add performs around 40% faster. Note that the variable v must be an integer. Example. Timer equals o. 4x equals l to 1000. A d d t x. Next l x. Print t timer. 500,507. The second version of add is a little more complicated. It is effectively identical to the following code. v equals v plus a. 39. If v top then v equals base. Like the first version of add this command is considerably faster than the separate. Instructions. Here's an example. Dim a, 10. 4x equals o to 10 a, x, equals x next x. v equals o. Repeat. Add vll to 10. Print a, v. Until v equals 100 rem this is an infinite loop as v is always less than 10. As you can see, add is ideal for handling circular or repetitive loops in your games. String operations. Like most versions of basic, Amos will happily allow you to add two strings together. A dollar equals Amos plus basic. Print A dollar. Amos basic. But Amos also lets you perform subtraction as well. This operation works by removing all occurrences of the second string from the first. Examples. Print Amos basic S. Amobaic. Print Amos basic dash Amos. Basic. Print a string of characters. A string goff characters. Comparisons between two strings are performed on a character by character basis using the ASC values of the appropriate letters. Examples AAX number. Hello S dollar then print S dollar, C dollar else print C dollar, S dollar. Parameters. The values you enter into an AMOS basic instruction are known as parameters. I dot E. Inc N. Add a 10. Inc 1, 2, 3. The parameters in the above instructions are N, A. 10, 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Occasionally. Some of the parameters of a command can be omitted from an instruction. In this case. Any unused values will automatically be assigned a number by default. Take the following. Example. Inks. This changes the ink color without affecting either the paper or outline colors. Notice. The commas in their normal positions, even though the values themselves have been. Omitted. Amos uses these commas to work out which order the parameters are to be. Entered into the instruction. This allows you to input a value in the middle of a command. Like so. Ink 3. Ink now sets the paper color leaving the ink and outline colors untouched. 
the same principle can also be applied to many other AMOS basic instructions. Providing you remember to keep the commas in their original positions, you can use this technique to avoid a great deal of unnecessary typing in your programs. If a parameter is essential you'll be presented with an illegal function call. So it's well worth experimenting with the various combinations, line numbers and labels. Earlier versions of BASIC expected each program line to begin with a number. This line number served as a target for the GOTO or GUSUB instructions. It was also used by the BASIC editor. While there's nothing wrong with this approach, it was even used in STOS. BASIC, it's not really necessary with AMOS. In AMOS BASIC all line numbers are completely optional, they are only provided for compatibility purposes with STOS BASIC. You may be wondering how you can use GOTO or GUSUB without line numbers. Well, you can replace them using labels. Labels. Labels are just a convenient way of marking a point in your AMOS BASIC programs. They consist of a string of characters formed using the same rules as AMOS variables. Labels should always be placed at the start of a line, and must be followed immediately by a colon. Colon, character. There should be no spaces between the label and the colon. Otherwise, the label will be treated as a procedure and you'll get an undefined procedure error. Here's a simple example. 41. Test label, rem this is a label. Print hi there. Go to test label. This program repeatedly prints the words hi there on the screen. It can be aborted by pressing Ctrl and C. Labels are much easier to read than line numbers. You are therefore advised to use them extensively in your AMOS basic programs. Procedures. If you've ever attempted to write a really large basic program, you'll appreciate how easy it can be to get completely lost halfway through. Nowadays most professional programmers split their programs into small modules known as procedures. Procedures allow you to concentrate your efforts on just one problem at a time, without the distractions provided by the rest of your program. Once you've written your procedures you can then quickly combine them in your finished program. Programs which use procedures are easy to write, easy to change and easy to debug. Amos basic procedures are totally independent program modules which can have their own program lines, variables, and even data statements. So there's absolutely no excuse for not making full use of them in your AMOS BASIC programs. Procedure, create an AMOS BASIC procedure. Procedure name parameter list. NPROC expression. This defines an AMOS BASIC procedure called name. Name is a string of characters, which identify the procedure. It is constructed in exactly the same way as a normal BASIC. Variable. Note that it's perfectly acceptable to use identical names for procedures. Variables and labels. AMOS will automatically work out which object you are referring to. From the context of the line. Procedures are similar to the GUSUB commands found in earlier versions of BASIC. Here's an example of a simple AMOS procedure. Procedure answer. Print furly 2. See how the procedure has been terminated with an NPROC statement. You should. Also note that the procedure and the NPROC directives are both placed on their own. Separate lines. This is compulsory. If you type the previous procedure into AMOS BASIC as it stands, and attempt to run it, nothing will happen. That's because you haven't actually called the new procedure from your BASIC program. This can be achieved by simply entering its name at the appropriate point in the program. As an example, enter the following line at the start of the program, and run it to see the result of the procedure. Answer. Important. When you are using several procedures on the same line, it's advisable to add an extra space at the end of each statement. This will avoid the risk of the procedure being confused with a label. For example, test, test, test rem performs the test procedure three times. Test, 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 rem defines the label test and executes test just twice. Alternatively, you can preclude your procedure calls with a PROC statement like so. PROC answer. Example. Rem shows you for sure that it is a procedure being called. Rem not just a command. PROC answer. Rem the same can be achieved without the PROC. Answer. Procedure answer. Print 42. End PROC. If you run this program again, the procedure will be entered, and the answer will be printed. Out on the screen. Although the procedure definition is positioned at the end of the program, it's possible to place it absolutely anywhere. Whenever Amos encounters a procedure statement, it installs the procedure and immediately jumps to the final end. PROC. This means there is no danger of accidentally executing your procedure by mistake. Once you've created a procedure, and tested it to your satisfaction, you can suppress it. In your listings using the fold option from the main menu. 
These folding procedures reduce the apparent complexity of your listings and allow you to debug large programs without the distractions of unimportant details. You can restore your procedure listings to the screen at any time by selecting the Unfold menu. Option Local and Global Variables All the variables you define inside your procedures are independent of any other variables used in your program. These variables are said to be loyal to your particular procedure. Here's an example which illustrates this. A equals 1000 B equals 42. Test. Print A B. Procedure test. Print A B. And PROC. 43. It should be apparent that the names A and B refer to completely different variables. Depending on whether they are used inside or outside the procedure test. The variables. Which occur outside a procedure are global and cannot be accessed from within it. Let's. Take another example. Dim A, 100. 4 V equals 1 to 100. AM equals V next V. Test flag equals 1. A print. And. Procedure A print. Test flag equals 1. 4 P equals 1 to 100. Print out. Next P. And dial. And proc. This program may look pretty harmless but it contains two fatal errors. Firstly, the value of test underscore flag inside the procedure will always have a value of. 0. So the loop between the if and the end if will never be performed. That's because. The version of test underscore flag within the procedure is completely separate from the copy. Defined in the main program. Like all variables, it's automatically assigned to zero the first. Time it's used. Furthermore, the program won't even run. Since the global array AO has been. Defined outside aprint, Amos basic will immediately report an array not dimensioned. Error at the line. Print out. This type of error is extremely easy to make. So it's vital that you treat procedures as separate programs with their own independent set of variables and instructions. Don't fall into the trap of using the same variable names inside and outside a procedure. Otherwise, you could be hoodwinked into believing they are the same variables, which could lead to inexplicable errors in your programs. Fortunately, there are a couple of extensions to this system which make it easy for you to transfer information between a procedure and your main program. Once you're Familiar with these commands you'll have few problems in using procedures successfully. In your programs. Parameters and procedures. One possibility is to include a list of parameter definitions in your procedure. This creates. A group of local variables which can be loaded directly from the main program. Here's an. Example. Procedure hello name dollar. Print hello, name dollar. And proc. The value to be loaded into name dollar is entered between square brackets as part of the. Procedure call. So the hello procedure could be performed in the following ways. Rem loads n dollar into name dollar and enters procedure. Input what's your name, n dollar. H e l l o dollar. Rem load the literal string Steven into name dollar and call hello. Hello Steven. As you can see, the parameter system is general purpose and works equally well with either variables or constants. Only the type of the variables are significant. This process can be used to transfer integer, real, or string variables. However you Cannot pass entire arrays with this function. If you want to enter several parameters you should separate your variables using commas. For example, procedure power a b. Procedure merge a dollar b dollar c dollar. These procedures might be called using lines like power 10 comma 3. Merge 1, 2, 3. Shared variables. Another way of passing data between a procedure and the main program is to use the shared instruction. Shared, define a list of global variables j. Shared variable list. Shared is placed inside a procedure definition and takes a list of Amos basic variables. Separated by commas. These variables are now treated as global variables, and can be accessed directly from the main program. Any arrays which you declare in this way should, of course have been previously dimensioned in your main program. Example. A equals 1000 B equals 42. Test. Print A B. Procedure test. Shared A B. A equals A plus B B equals B plus 10. And PROC. Test can now read and write information to the global variables A and B. If you want to. Share an array you should define it like so. Shared A O B number O C dollar O REM shares arrays A B number and C dollar. 45. Global. Declare a list of global variables from the main program. Global variable list. When you're writing a large program, it's commonplace for a number of procedures to. Share the same set of global variables. This provides a simple method of transferring large amounts of information between your various procedures. In order to simplify this process, 
we've included a single command which can be used directly in your main program. Global defines a list variables which can be accessed anywhere inside your basic program, without the need for an explicit shared statement in your procedure. Definitions Example A equals 1000, B equals 42. Global AB TEST1 Print AB TEST2 Print AB Procedure TEST1 A equals A plus B, B equals B plus 10. End PROC Procedure TEST2 a equals A asterisk B, B equals B plus 10. End PROC. Returning values from a procedure. If a procedure needs to return a value which is only local to itself, it must use the following. Command so that it can inform the calling procedure command where to find the local. Variable. Param, return a parameter from a procedure. Param. The param functions provide you with a simple way of returning a result from a procedure. They take the result of an optional expression in the end PROC statement and return it in one of the variables param, param number, or param dollar depending on its type. Example. Merge underscore strings amos, basic. Print param dollar. Procedure merge strings a dollar b dollar c dollar. Print a dollar b dollar c dollar. End proc a dollar and b dollar and c dollar. Note that end proc may only return a single parameter in this way. The param. Functions will always contain the result of the most recently executed procedure. Here's. Another example, this time showing the use of the param number function. 